What's up everybody, it's Uncle Chrissy. I have been toying with some ideas what I can do for YouTube content for a little while now. I uh, kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. I didn't really want to get into the whole early leaks and hand reviews. There's a lot of stuff out there and a lot of people that do some really, really great stuff. So I decided to take it a little bit of a different route. I think a lot of people, um, hopefully you follow me on Twitter at Uncle underscore Chrissy. If you do, you know that I am a blog writer. Um, I really, really enjoy doing that stuff. And what I really like doing is writing the longer pieces. You know, there's only so many times you can write about a new colorway of a uh, new Vimero 5 before you get a little bit, uh, a little tired of it yourself. But I like writing some longer pieces and features, talk about different things that are going on in the sneaker world. And I decided to just keep it at that. Let's do what I do already and maybe try to trim this up for everybody. So today we have the first episode of TLDR. I'm gonna take one of my longer pieces, trim it up to just a few minutes so you don't have to bore yourself reading through pages that I know nobody likes to do once they graduated school. So, uh, recently I wrote a piece for the site supply called The Rise of the Dad Shoe. Uh, we talked about how dad shoes are becoming more and more popular. If you don't know, dad shoes are gonna be, uh, you know, focused on brands like Asics, New Balance, on running has been a big, big mover in the past year. Uh, Solomon, all doing real big things. If you look around, you go to the mall, you go to the store, whatever, you're starting to see a lot of these chunky sold leather, suede. Um, you're starting to see those a lot, lot more than you're seeing Jordans, Dunks, uh, you know, Yeezys. These shoes are starting to take over. Uh, StockX just put out a report maybe a week, maybe two weeks ago, that said these are the shoes that are on the rise. On running was up about 15,000%. I think Solomon was up about 2,000%. Asics was up 72%. And these are the brands that are really, really growing right now. So I wanted to take a quick look at why that is, look at some of the brands that are doing big things, and just talk them up a little bit. As we all know, the dad shoe movement, it's not new. It's been around since probably the 60s or 70s, as long as people have been getting old. Uh, new Balance is far and away the undisputed champ of that world. I think the only reason New Balance didn't make that list of the fastest growers, growers is because they've been doing it a little bit longer than everybody and they have a more established history. They have a much more established history than a company like On Running in terms of aftermarket sales. Uh, Solomon as well falls into that bracket. It's not to say that they haven't been doing it for a while or aren't doing great things, it's just to say their aftermarket performance doesn't quite have the longevity that a brand like New Balance or a brand like Nike does, so it's a little bit easier for them to show growth. And how did this happen? Uh, that's the big, big question that everybody is asking. Uh, so I think the way this kind of came down is in the golden era of sneakers when sneaker culture was being born back in the mid to late 80s, the early 90s, you had kids. Kids were running around town watching Michael Jordan play in person, getting Air Max 95s in 1995. These are the people that actually started these things. Ronnie Five was doing his collaborations when he was working at Atrium when he was in his early to mid 20s. He put out his first Asics collab and really started to grow things since then. And what happens is that the people that were in their 20s during that era, era and getting the Jordans, getting the Jordan 4s, all these kind of shoes, they got older. They got older, the knee started to give out a little bit, the hamstring gets a little bit tight, they're chasing kids around all day long. And a lot of those shoes, well, let's be honest, they're not the most comfortable. Uh, shoes that were built in the 80s, like Jordans, like Dunks, uh, like Adidas Shell Toes, things like that, I'm sorry, uh, Superstars or Gazelles, they're not the most comfort forward. And these people right now that were alive during that era are looking for something that's a little more comfort forward while they can still stay fresh in the street. So they want to see enhanced cushion. They want to see a little bit more arch support. They want to be able to see a shoe that's durable and isn't gonna wear out after five months because they got kids to pay for nowadays. So the reason that they're doing this kind of thing is to, is to really focus on those people, let the shoes grow with that generation. And you look at who's doing the big things right now in the sneaker world as far as designs and collabs. Yes, you still got the Whitaker Group, uh, doing hype Jordans, doing dunks, things like that. You still have those things coming out. SBs are turning out a new collab every day. I'm not saying those are dying off, not by, a, not by a little bit. I am just saying they're not growing to the level of the dad shoe. But like I said, the big names in the world, as far as you know, what's really hype on collabs, you have the Ronnie Fogs and Kith. You have Teddy Santis, uh, the creative director over at New Balance. You have Joe Freshgoods doing things. And these guys are really focusing in uh, on JJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJJ
Jound isn't putting out, well, I think he did put out a gazelle, but they're not putting out dunks. They're not putting out Jordans. They're putting out these dad shoes to help these people grow, to help these folks that are a little bit older, honestly, probably have a little bit more money than they did when they were in their 20s. And they're focusing towards them. So what happened is that those designers that were alive in those 80s, 90s, they got older too. So Ronnie Fogg is in his 40s now. Kanye West is 52. These people are in their late 30s. They're in their 40s. So I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say that maybe they fit into that same demographic of people that want a little bit more comfort, that want a little bit more stability to help support their ankles and their knees and things like that. It's not too far of a stretch to think that the designers want these things because they're getting a little bit older, to think that the little bit next gen, I'm sorry, the older generation of sneaker clientele, sneaker co culture wants these shoes and it's growing. It's growing to the point where the younger generations are starting to take notice. It's not just the collabs that are selling out anymore. The Kayano 14s are selling out instantly. Just GR restock pairs are selling out as fast as you can possibly imagine. So the culture, the consumer is getting a little bit older. The designers are getting a little bit older and they're starting to pass these things on to the next generation. The next generation is the one that's reaping the benefits of it. You don't have to look too far to see people in their early 20s, people in their late teens rocking a pair of Dime Asics around town, rocking a pair of John Solomon's. Uh, so I got my newest pair. I have been a big, big Asics fan for a little bit now. Um, I've been using them as running shoes for years and I just got my, eh, not my first pair, but uh, went ahead and got a pair of the Hal Studios Asics uh, 1130s. Super clean shoe, super stable, super comfortable, uh, real, real easy to wear. I just got these in today. Uh, thank you to the company that sent these over to me. Um, I, I paid for them. No, I just was lucky and got an invoice for them. Um, but these are probably my next shoe. I'm going to be rocking these a lot, uh, getting a little bit more comfy. So there you have it, the Rise of the Dad shoe. People that were there in the 80s and 90s when this thing started are now in their 40s and 50s. The designers that were alive when that thing started are now in their late 30s to early 40s to maybe even in their early 50s. These people got older. They bodies are starting to break down a little bit. They want comfort. They want to stay fresh. They're buying up so much of the stuff that the younger generation is starting to take notice. These collabs are selling out instantly. These hype collabs with you know people like Teddy Santis and Joe Fresh are selling for $100 over resell, over retail while Jordans are barely breaking even. Um, that's the way the movement's going. There's so much of that going on. The younger generations are taking notice and starting to rock these shoes themselves. So the movement grows, you pass it on to the younger generation, and that is how the dad movement is taking the world by storm. Thank you so much. I'm Uncle Chrissy. Please drop a sub down below. Catch me on Twitter at Uncle underscore Chrissy, and uh, look out for more episodes of TLDR. Thank you.